So when we look at 10-3, um, the journal that we have up should be very familiar because it's exactly the same journal that we used in the previous one. Okay. Um, one of the things at our um, journal here, the instructions talk about uh, we're going through and journalizing for client interiors. Uh, we're going to journalize for the current year, and we have source documents abbreviated as, as follows, CM uh, for credit memorandum and S for sales invoice. Now, we now have three memorandums that we are going to be using. Okay, the first one is a memorandum. What kind of transaction do we use for a memorandum? Give me an example of the exact transaction we'd use for memorandum. Yes, bought supplies on account. Great, anytime you see that, you know it's going to be in our general journal. Now, in the last chapter, we learned about debit memorandums. What do debit memor memorandums deal with? Returns of merchandise. So when merchandise is returned, we're going to have a debit memorandum, and we're going to be affecting purchases, returns, and allowances. Okay, because purchases have what for normal balance? Debit. Debit memorandum, debit purchases. Got it? Now, in this um, section here, we have a credit memorandum. And credit memorandums are going to deal when customers return items to us. Okay, so when customers return items to us, we're going to deal with the fact that we have sales returns and allowances, and sales has what for normal balance? Credit, right? That shouldn't be new stuff. You guys are not awake today. Um, so when you see a DMM or CM, you kind of know the type of transaction that's going to be affected by it. When we look at June 3rd, granted credit to Will Banks & Associate for merchandise return, $457 plus sales tax, $36.56 from S356 for a total of $493.56. They give us all that information. They will always give you the original source document in case you need to reference back to the original invoice that was granted. Now, three numbers are given to us, product, sales tax, and total. We have to, when a customer returns item to us, go through and take off the amount of sales tax that we no longer are going to own to the government. If we don't do that, the co our business is still going to be liable for that sales tax, even though we are not going to be able to collect it from our customers. So that's why sales returns and allowances is a little bit trickier than dealing with purchases, returns, and allowances. It does tell us that we're going to be journalizing on page 6 of our general journal, so page 6 is already on there. Let's go ahead and put the date on there as of June 3rd. You're right, it is June, not July. I guess I wanted it to be July in my example. Look at that. Even switch tabs. How's that? That's better? Okay. So, we have to deal with sales returns and allowances, sales tax, and accounts receivable. We need to go through and put them in order, and when we put them in order, the one that needs to go on the top is going to be our sales returns and, and allowances. That is always going to be the value of the product. And what is the total value of product return on this one? No. 457 is the value of the product. 49356 was the amount that Will Banks and Associate owed us. But the physical value of the product was only 457. The next line that's going to go on there is going to be sales tax payable. Sales tax payable is a liability account. Liabilities um, have a debit excuse me, have a credit normal balance, we no longer owe this sales tax, so we have to debit sales tax payable for 36 56 And then our third line is going to be accounts receivable slash Will Banks and Associates. And we know that if we have a slash in my account title, what else do we need to do? Slash in the post reference. Chapter 11 is going to be teaching us about that slash and how we're going to be using that. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is then go ahead. The total amount that Will Banks and Associates no longer owes us is 493.56, but I hit enter without my change. 
So that's how you're going to deal with a return when there is sales tax that's due on it. I forgot my slash. I talked about it, but I didn't type it. Thank you. June 6th. Granted credit to Westfall High School for damaged merchandise, $67, no sales tax. So here's, an, here's another example of um, where we don't need to worry about sales tax because it is a school. So the date is the 6th of June. So this transaction is only going to vary by how? What's going to be different about it than the one that we just did? One last line, no sales tax. So the accounts that are going to be affected are going to be sales returns and allowances and then accounts receivable in the name of the business. So sales returns and allowances is a contra account to our account sales. It has a debit normal balance and it's going to go through an increase by $67. Then I'm going to have accounts receivable, Westfall High School, slash in the post reference column, I'm not going to forget it this time and 67. Again, a business needs to keep track of the total value of products that are being returned because if we see that over the year we have $75,000 worth of products that are returned, that is a big waste of time and money for our business. Think of all the employees that had to deal with that. So if we see that, we may need to take a look at potentially going through and getting a different type of product that our customers won't return as much. Now, many of you have probably returned an item and they've asked the reason why. Defective, doesn't work, didn't like, didn't meet your satisfaction. They collect that information for them to figure out if they need to change who they buy their items from. Anyone else get a perfect on work together? I did. Go ahead and try the on your own. It shouldn't take you too long. <laughs> 